and welcome to GMAC Golf. You're tuned in for another episode of A Golfer's Rambling, so thank you very much. And today we're going to talk about my 2019 goals that I set at the start of the season and how they look at the end of the season, whether I've achieved them, how far I was uh, off achieving them and so on. So um, without further ado, let's get stuck in. So at the start of 2019 season, I, I did something that I wouldn't normally do, is set myself some goals. So I've been playing golf again now for a couple of years, just plodding along, obviously knowing the ultimate goal was to get back to category one, but never set any goals. So at the start of this season, 2019 season, got myself down, got a little book out, and set myself some goals. And the goals, they weren't ridiculous goals. In fact, I'll put the goals up here now so you can see what they are and I will uh, I'll talk you through them. So first goal was obviously to get to initially single figures. So I started the year on around between 13 and 16, I can't quite remember. Um, but the aim was to get to single figures, so 9.4 or below. Um, you know, for my ability I feel that was achievable. Um, absolutely achievable um, so yeah that was the first goal the second goal was to win a major competition so a board competition at my club um, again something I don't think is unachievable um, we have five or six majors throughout the year you know there's no reason why I couldn't why I couldn't do that um, on the competition front another goal was I wanted to win at least five competitions in total um, throughout the year be it home or away um, again the amount of golf I play and the amount of competition golf I play five competitions I believe was, was totally achievable um, absolutely now onto the actual stats this is where I feel where I started to push myself um, because obviously not hugely a stat man but obviously I do understand where it can uh, can improve my golf so obviously I, I felt important it, it important to, to get those stats out there um, you know and work towards them so I, I looked at my, my puts per round at 32 I wanted to get it down to 32 um, driving accuracy I wanted at 60% fairways hit and again greens in regulation the same at um, at the same at 60% uh, greens in regulation here now so I've set myself six goals there. Out of those six goals, I have hit four of them, which I'm absolutely buzzing about and frustrated about at the same time. Um, because the two that I missed, or one of the two that I missed, I felt I really should have got. So let's talk in order as it comes. Obviously, I'll stick pictures of, of the, um, the goals up so you can see them. Um, and you can see the dates that I've hit them as well. Um, so I'll put that on, on a little little picture. Um, if you're not already following me on Instagram, they are on my Instagram already. Um, I'll stick the link below. But they are on there. But yeah, so for my, my goals, my handicap, I um, I hit the handicap goal really quickly. Um, so I hit that sort of five months. So as of the 8th of May this year, I was cut down to 7.8. So well into single figures. Um, huge cut so I started off the year really well um, competition win a lot of second and third places as well so started off the year really strongly performing really really well and I'll come back to the reasons as to why why that was in, in a few minutes um, I apologise now it's probably going to be a long one um, but stick with me um, so yeah you know I hit the handicap goal really quickly, which I was really happy with. Um, I bounced back up a little bit, um, so I start. I got cut down to seven point eight, um, and now I finished this season on seven point nine. So you know, still well within the single figures bracket, um, and a good building block for the next season, which I'll talk about in another goal with golfers ramblings. Um, second one, uh, major competition. As the season progressed, I was beginning to think it wasn't going to happen. Um, played in all the major competitions. Obviously, the club championships I walked off after second after the second round um, due to how bad I was playing. Um, you know, and I don't condone it. It's something I wouldn't normally do, but I was playing that bad. It wasn't fair on my playing partners for me to carry on, um, if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, it was affecting their game. So I walked in, um, but 
last my last major of the year I uh, I won which which funnily enough is the one which I was a defending champion of so I, you know won that two years on the spin now so I'm happy with that so I've got that major in the bag greens in regulation as of the 16th of September I hit 60 percent and that's that's stayed that is I think it's I think I finished the year on 61.2 so greens and regulation was strong was was happy with that um driving driving uh, accuracy so fairways in regulation that was 80 percent at the um at the same day the 16th of september now that's dropped a little bit that's dropped down to about 77 um but in all fairness i'm absolutely buzzing with that anyone that's watched me play knows i hit um spray the ball left to right is my big my big miss um but again, a lot of work at the start of the season has really paid off. So those goals were hit. Now the two that's frustrated me, and I'll come to the reasons why uh, frustrated me. Obviously the majors, I didn't hit. Oh, sorry, competition. I only won four competitions this year, home and away, which is massively, massively frustrating. Like I said, the amount of competition golf I play, and how well I was playing at the start of the year. I haven't played bad throughout the year. You know, there's been a few spells where I've been bad, but not not bad enough not to win more competitions and it's frustrating me because I believe I should have won more I put my positions myself in position to win more but I didn't so I won four out of five of the competitions that I'd set myself it's a building block for next year but on that one I need to sort of assess and think why is it that I haven't won what's stopped me from winning and I think that's going to go back to sort of part of this part of the preparation that I did for the start of the 2019 season that I need to do for the 2020 season but I need to continue with it and it's a lot around the mental game worked hard on my mental game for 2019 which I think is a massive massive part as to why I've improved so well and why I've hit so many of the goals that I've set really worked on the mental game and, and I can't stress how important it is whilst I did have lessons at the start of the season they weren't swing rebuild lessons they weren't massive changes lessons they were little little tweaks that needed they just needed putting in a lead needed putting me straight so the the biggest improvement for me for 2019 is 100% my mental game so i think that needs to we need to i need to continue with that into 2020 and i need to build on those four wins and, and get the five um, because as i say my ability definitely says i should be winning more than than five competitions a year Second one is my puts per round, 33.95, so 30, 34 puts a round. I've reduced it by about three. I was wondering about 37. Now, the reason that's frustrating is because this year, throughout the, mid, the middle of the season, the, my putting was my strongest part of my game. I've stuck with one putter throughout the season, um, whereas anyone that knows me and follows me, I change putters like I change my socks. Um, you know, putting put has been a real issue for me. But I had a lesson at the very, very start of the season, maybe even the end of last season, maybe even the end of the 18 season. Um, 45 minutes, a couple of little changes to my posture and my grip. Um, my stroke itself was actually fine. Um, and my putting was bang on. So I actually thought or expected my putting stat to come down more than it has done um, because I say my putting has been really strong this year or it's felt really strong and I don't know if that's just the, the incremental improvement from the previous season where it was real poor as to sort of lure me into a false sense of belief but it is what it is I haven't hit the goal and I'll um, I'll be that will be a goal that continues into 2019 um, why? Because I believe, I still believe in the, the, the saying drive for show, put for dough. It's all well and good hitting 300 yard drives. But the shots where you save, you know, at the end of the day, you're not putting the ball in the hole where you drive it, you're putting it in where you put up. If you're hitting fairways and you're 25, 30 feet away, even if you've hit a 350 yard drive, if you're still 20, 20 feet away from the hole, you need to be able to put to get that ball in the hole. So I'm, I'm a firm believer of 
still driving for show put it today, you know, 100%. Give me 270 down the fairway every time and never ever three put, I'm, I'm a happy boy. And that's, that's that's ultimately the goal I'm going for. I don't want to be three put it. And uh, you know, that's that's where, where we're at. So that's my golfing goals reviewed 2019 so overall I'm, I'm a happy I'm a happy chappy I'm, I'm I'm happy you know four out of the six goals I've set I've hit and, and I've succeeded quite well in my stats goals you know um, so I'm happy with that you know the, the, the big one for me is my driving accuracy which is a massive surprise you know I knew it was close but when I actually drilled down and had a look I didn't think I would be that above the 60% that I set but really really happy with that a decent distance as well, you know. Let's let's not forget, I hit the ball okay. YouTube review. How's my YouTube channel gone? Um, it coulda, shoulda, woulda done better. With my content hasn't been very regular this year, mainly due to promotion at work, being understaffed, having a young family. The same. This isn't obviously my full time job. This isn't isn't what I do for a living. I have a job away from YouTube, obviously. And, you know, it's important for me to spend time with my family and, 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 and make my career at work as successful as possible. So if I've had a promotion at work, which has obviously took um, time away from the golf club, which has meant less content. You know, I've got content out where I can, and I think the content that I've put out is decent. Going into 2019, my workforce is now stable which will free up more, it won't free up more time in the sense that I'll be finishing work early. It basically just means I won't be working longer hours. I'll be working my normal rotated hours, whereby I can then still get, get time to get onto the golf course or to the driving range to get content filmed um, for you guys. And obviously the reason I set the channel up was to document my, um, my journey back to category one and, uh, 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 and maybe lower. So that's, that's, really important for me to get that back on track and I think 2020 will definitely definitely see that um, you know on the back of YouTube and social media I want to say a massive thank you to to Liam Harrison and, and Golf Logs UK couple of reasons really one for ultimately introducing me to two people that I would now call very very good friends um, Golf Nuts and the Tattooed Golfer um, without Liam's golf days I probably wouldn't have met them as soon as I did but I did and we've become fantastic friends and obviously out of that the Shankers has been born so that's a massive plus on the YouTube well that's a massive plus on, on life um, rather than just YouTube that's you know that's a big thing for me um, meeting them too so you know if it wasn't for them the likelihood is I'd have chucked YouTube in a couple of months ago because I was that close to doing it through one thing and another um, I won't get into the, the nitty gritty of that. Those that follow me on Twitter will probably know, um, but I'm not getting into that. But if it wasn't for those two, and again, Liam, I'd have probably chucked it in and we wouldn't be having this video at all now or any future videos. So, you know, that's a massive, that's the first thank you for Liam. Second one is obviously, he's given me some advice behind the scenes, reference my rebrand. You know, I was the grumpy golfer originally for those that have followed for a long time. Um, speaking with him, he thought that was holding me back. So I've had a little rebrand and I have seen some growth off the back of that. Also, we played the three of us, me, Golf Nuts and um, obviously the Tattooed Golfer. Played golf with Liam, which you will have probably all seen now. That's live on his channel. You know, off the back of that, I have seen some massive traction. I see some big growth off the back of that. So again, thanks for that, Liam. I appreciate it. Going forward into 2020, where do I see the channel? After the last couple of weeks, I've got the fire in my belly to create again. I've got more time, as I say, work-wise um, to create again. My eldest daughter, obviously she's been on the channel a couple of times, she wants to come back on, you know, so when the weather's nicer, we'll hopefully see a lot more of her getting involved, hopefully show, you know, hopefully document her journey for starting golf, maybe. I'm not in the slightest pushing her, if she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to. It's it's entirely up to her. But as it stands at the minute, she does want to. She you know she is enjoying coming to the driving range, um, and she wants to start her own YouTube channel. So fingers crossed, we can get some more of her on the channel. Um, 
the golfers rumblings will definitely be a staple they'll be here to stay i like doing these i like talking to you guys in this format um generally because i like being in the car a bit weird but i like being in the car um get peace and quiet when i'm in the car and obviously i can just talk my thoughts and feelings out with you guys which i appreciate um so the golfers rumblings will be staying um, a new feature which will be coming early early 2020 and which will stay which was actually inspired by um, Golf Nuts Beats Par series. Um, I'm gonna do a How Low Can You Go series, which is ultimately very similar to, to Lee's um, Beat Par series, I'll be, but I think for different reasons. He's doing it, I, I'm, you know, I'm not even gonna go into the reasons why he's doing it. Watch his stuff and he'll, he'll sort of explain to you why. Reason I'm doing it is, is it because I feel by breaking my 18 holes down into blocks of three, I will improve my golf and I'll improve my scores. So by doing a how low can I go across three holes, it's ultimately breaking that scorecard down for me into the blocks of three. Um, so that's why I'm doing it, um, to improve, ultimately improve my game. Because I know if I can do three holes, three under, followed by another three holes, three under, followed by another three holes, you get the picture. That's obviously by in the sky scoring, but you get the picture. So the first one of those will be dropping early 2020. Um, it's already edited and, well, it's already filmed and edited. A few little tweaks needs to do, and that will be out early 2020. So stay tuned for that. Um, be interesting to see what you think I can score. So leave your comments down below. How low can I go on my first first episode? And that's that was filmed at Chalton Cum Hardy, the home of the golf mates. Um, which is a lovely course. So that'll be that'll be part of the 2020 roster, if you will. Also, we get some of my pals on the channel, um, doing a few course vlogs with those. A little bit of stuff at the Top Tracer um, by me, Drake Hotel and Golf Club. Um, they've kindly me allowed to use count kindly allowing me to use their facilities and film there. So there'll be stuff coming from those. Um, those of you who haven't used Top Tracer, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, how accurate are they? I'm not 100% sure, um, but they're accurate enough to give me some fun and give me some data to work off the back of. I'll be having lessons. I'll be having a few lessons um, early 2020. Don't know if they'll be filmed, but what will be coming off the back of those lessons is hopefully um, a Beat the Pro series. So my coach has agreed he will play Beat the Pro. Um, nice thing about him and where we're from is he's coaching Steve Webster, um, European Tour winner. We've also both grown up with Andy Sullivan, European Tour player. So the potential for getting some massive names, really, if you will, on the channel is there. Just need to speak to Luke, my coach, and see what he can work out first of all with Steve, and then um, and then see if we can get Andy on afterwards. So yeah, that's that's my 2019 review and a little bit about 2020. I'll be doing a golfers rumblings more on what's to come in 2020 soon, um, early part of the year. Um, there will be a what's in the bag because those that you have followed me knows that everything apart from my wedges and my putter has changed. So definitely, definitely need to be doing a what's in the bag sometime soon. Um, guys, that's everything for today. I'm not gonna, gonna bore the pants off you so much. That's quite a long ramblings. Um, so thank you so, so much for watching. For all the new subscribers, for all the, the, the new guys and girls that have followed me, thank you so, so much. Um, I hope you enjoy the content that I've done. I hope you enjoy the content to come. For those that have followed me for a long time, that have been here from day dot, thank you again so much for sticking with me through the, um, we'll call it a dry spell. Um, as I say, lots more content to come in 2020. Um, so again, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Um, stay tuned. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please click it. Also, give that bell notification. Um, it will give you a, a little a little, little message when I uh, put content out. Don't worry, it won't be every day, but it will be regular. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a fantastic new year. Hope you all had a great Christmas. See you soon. Brian Little. <laughs>